Welcome to this Killick Explains video. This week I want to take on long-term forecasts. It's uh, sort of that time of year, if you like, uh, the run into Christmas 2021 happens every year. People start saying, I am going to release my forecast of where the market will be 12 months from now. And actually, it's pretty difficult to get it right. If you look back, not many people get their guesstimates about where key indices will be, like the FTSE 100, where certain shares will be. It's just a bit of a hodgepodge. Now, why is that? Why is it difficult to get forecasts of share prices or groups of shares in an index right? Well, essentially, it shouldn't be too difficult in theory, because in theory, a share price is simply the net present value of future earnings. So in other words, I won't do it here. The graphic next to me may help. What you would do to get the today's share price is project into the future earnings. You would then bring those back to today's value using a discount rate. You would add it all up and you'd say, right, that in theory is the net present value of the firm I'm looking at, divide by the number of shares in issue, and you'd get a share price. I'm cutting a few corners, making it sound simpler than it really is, but that's the principle. And you think, well, hang on a minute, if today's share price is simply future earnings discounted back to a net present value, then surely share prices should track earnings. In other words, if earnings expectations change, then so will share prices. Surely that's not too difficult. Well, leaving aside the fact that projecting earnings into the future, guesstimating corporate earnings is pretty difficult, actually, there are other factors at work that muddy the water. Now, let's go back to expectations. In the medium term, you have this problem, which is that analysts have two things that they'll build into share prices. One is earnings they know about. So an earnings season's come around, companies declare their earnings and share prices move accordingly. But the second thing is expectations because stock markets look forward, not backwards. And those expectations are built into what's called PE ratios and share prices. And just to give you an example of how expectations can change the picture through what's called multiple expansion or PE multiple expansion, let's say you've got a company with a share price of 100 pence or a pound, and you've got earnings per share of 10p. The PE multiple is then 10, okay? 100 divided by 10, or 10. Now, what could change that PE multiple? Well, it could be a couple of things, all right? Either the company's earnings move or the share price changes. And if we rearrange the PE multiple, so if the PE is the current share price over earnings, we can also say that the share price is earnings times the PE ratio. Now, imagine the share price has moved from 100 to 120. Why would that be? Well, it could be that the market is pricing in higher expectations of future earnings into the PE multiple. So actual earnings haven't changed at all, but expectations have. And the diagram next to me will hopefully clarify what I'm talking about there. So you've got this problem, which is that analysts are constantly building into PE multiples and their expectations of the future, what has already happened and what they think will happen. And that complicates the art, if you like, of distilling what actually a share price reflects. To what extent? Is it exuberance? Is it 50% actual earnings, 50% expectations? Is it 30, 70, 70, 30? And that analysis is pretty crucial to understanding what might happen to share prices over the next 12 months, for example. And then there are the short-term sentiment factors. So share prices in the short term are influenced, and by the way, a year is quite short term, uh, for some people, it feels like an eternity, especially as we've waded through a, a pandemic and so on. But actually, in share price terms, it's quite a short period. You've got short-term factors. So you've got market sentiment. You've got nervousness. You've got the mood that traders wake up in on a Monday morning. You've got the algorithmic automatic 
trigger trades, if you like. So you've got a whole raft, you've got economic data, you've got a whole raft of things that over the short term can influence share prices. Maybe those things bear no relation to a company's long-term ability to generate earnings, but nonetheless, they influence share prices. So here's my point. The reason why forecasts tend to be so dreadful is that, first of all, the premise of a clean forecast, that it's simply looking at a case looking at the net present value of future earnings, well, that's pretty tough for a start. Then you've got the water muddied by this idea of PE multiple expansion and contraction, expectations being built into the PE ratio, uh, and that moving the goalposts, if you like. And then you've got all the short-term sentiment factors, which, yeah, definitely, for any period up to a year, can heavily influence what happens to share prices. So that's why forecasting is something of a mug's game. It doesn't stop people trying, but uh, basically, as Terry Smith, the somewhat legendary UK fund manager, once put it, uh, there are two kinds of investor in the market. Those who know they can't predict what's going to happen next and those who've yet to find that out. Now, as an investor, is there anything you can do to take advantage of all this? Because it sounds a bit gloomy. There's no point in forecasting share prices. Well, yes, actually. In the short term, markets do pull back too fast and too far. So there are people out there who watch for those pullbacks and look at an opportunity potentially to buy on the dips, as it were, or to get in at what they regard as a fairly good price. And don't forget, you can monitor some of this sentiment stuff, and contrarian investors do exactly that. They look at when key players in the market are bearish and maybe see that as an opportunity to buy, or when the market's getting ahead of itself, irrational exuberance, as Alan Greenspan once called it, and they might look to get out at that point. Now, I've covered a lot of ground here. For those people thinking, what was that stuff about PE ratios? Do uh, tap into our extensive library, killick.com forward slash learn. And if you'd like a copy of my guide, which does do a bit more work on PE ratios and explains the basics, plus some others besides, then email me, please, at editor at and I'll be delighted to send that out.